Thanks for clicking. Variable rate mortgages with fixed payments are a dangerous product. This according to Peter Rudledge, head of OSFI, Canada's banking regulator, during testimony before the Senate. You think? Indeed, the product where borrowers' payments remain the same even when prime rises, instead seeing the life of their loan increase when their trigger rate is met, surged to the forefront this year and last, when 500 basis points worth of rate hikes led to amortizations of 60, 70, even 90 years. Yet the product appears to be coming under even more scrutiny, with even Deputy Governor of the Bank of Canada, Carolyn Rogers, urging the banks to shift away from these products. Why can't I catch a f break? Yeah, with so many predicting rate cuts in the near to midterm future, and some already sounding the alarm that the mortgage industry is going to pile back into variable rates, the powers that be, Canada's banking regulator and its central bank, seem to be signaling otherwise. So what I want to do today is briefly go over variable rate mortgages with fixed payments, take a look at Rulidge's testimony before the Senate and Deputy Governor Rogers' interview with Bloomberg, discuss some implications going forward, and then go over what to look for next. Speaking of next, we are eagerly awaiting the release of Canada's national real estate data for the month of October coming out from the CREA, and we'll obviously have an update out on that data on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, let's get into these dangerous mortgages. Onto these variable rate mortgages, which have resulted in so many having to increase their amortizations by more than double. Very briefly, variable rate mortgages differ from that of adjustable rate in that the payment is fixed, so the payment doesn't change when prime rises. The only change is the portion of the payment that goes towards principal. And these types of mortgages worked well during the pandemic when rates were at an all-time low. And always will be. They worked well when rates were at an all-time low, with borrowers paying a much larger portion of their payment towards principal than towards interest. However, as interest rates surged upwards, those fixed payments were no longer enough to cover the interest portion that was due to the bank. And, absent a lump sum payment or a payment increase, unpaid interest got tacked onto the principal every month. The difference gets tacked onto the principal. Yeah, I understand. And with the amount owing to the bank continuing to increase month after month, banks extended their amortizations extended the life of the borrower's mortgage. And these types of mortgages definitely proved popular during the pandemic. According to the Bank of Canada's 2022 Financial System Review, of the 10% of Canadians that have variable rate mortgages, 80% of those had fixed payments. And it's these types of mortgages that could be a real problem going into 2025 and 2026, with RBC estimating that their payments could rise as much as 84%. But, while some have said that these types of mortgages save the Canadian economy, socializing risk on the books of the banks, Peter Rudledge, head of Canada's banking regulator, said that this is a dangerous product, in that it puts the homeowner in a position of negative amortization in a rising rate environment. Which makes sense, it's not so much a problem that borrowers have a 90-year amortization. The problem comes at the time of renewal, when that 90-year amortization has to snap back to 25 or 20 years, which sends the payment skyrocketing. And, as such, OSFI said, while it wouldn't want to interpose its judgment on product design, it thinks the system would be healthier if that product was used much less. And while Canada's banking regular wanting to see less stress in the system is nothing new, comments come amid an interview with Deputy Governor of the Bank of Canada, Carolyn Rogers, who also expressed concern over these types of mortgages. For her part, Rogers said that she thinks the product deserves a good look and will get a good look, noting that a large book of negatively amortizing mortgages isn't good for the banks or for mortgage holders. Well, where the f*** were you when I dropped down in the first place? And while the comments over the potential problems with these types of mortgages are well taken, or should be at this point, the timing and source of these comments is curious, given that the Bank of Canada doesn't usually comment on specific financial products, instead preferring to make broad statements and counting on the real estate industry to run with it. You are my puppet. I let you dance. While the deputy governor did take time to note that interest rate hikes are continually on the table until the bank sees inflation is really on its way to returning to 2%, my guess is there is a real concern that with so many predicting rate cuts, that these types of mortgages are going to see a surge in interest moving into a future that is as of yet unclear. It's very rare to see the central bank and Canada's banking regulator give the same message on the same day in public. Further, as we've seen so many experts arguing that the bank isn't going to have a choice but to lower interest rates in order to save homeowners that are going to be renewing in 2025 and 2026, if the bank is going to see its hands tied due to the widespread usage of these mortgages, then the bank is going to want to see their usage curtailed. So we have the Bank of Canada and OSFI, Canada's central bank and Canada's banking regulator, 
giving the same message on the same day, which tells me they're preparing the public for some type of policy change coming at some point. Official or not, we could see the use of these variable rate mortgages with fixed payments limited going forward. With that said, whether or not we see some sort of unofficial change on the part of the banks, or if it comes down as a director from OSFI, remains to be seen. But we will obviously have an update out on any changes on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates. But for now, thanks so much for watching.